One. Welcome back, folks, to Smoke Him If You Got Him. I am G and my co host, the Oracle of Oxford County, Jeremiah Charlton. Hello, everyone. Hello. How's it going, buddy? It's a wonderful day. It is a wonderful day. We have a great, great record for everyone today. Yes, we do. It is Wolfgang Downer, and the album is called Et Cetera. Now, you know the rules here. You know how this goes down. Here in Smoke Em, if you got them, pretty simple premise. You're going to roll one. You're going to smoke one. We're going to listen to a record side by side, and you're going to come back to us right after every side. We're going to discuss it. It's going to be a lighthearted discussion of a really great record, something you usually wouldn't listen because you already said this isn't your daddy's prog show. No, it's not. And again, folks, we're trying to get away from the everyday hustle bustle of life. Put the phone down. Put, put down the phone. Just listen. Sit back. Listen to the music, and come back. And please, uh, we're going to talk about it. So let's start side one, and join us right back, folks. And we're back. We are back with the A side of this wonderful masterpiece of an album. I, I do have to ask you this yes. time to give me some stats before we go into it. I really enjoyed this uh, this side. I really enjoyed this record, but I didn't even look up the year that it was made. So why don't you give us some stats on this record and we can go into it. It is 1971. Okay. Do you know anything about uh, Mr. Wolfgang Dauna? I do not, sir. Please enlighten me. S- so he's a German um, piano player, jazz piano player. And he was like, mm, sort of normal-ish. And then, <laughs> and, and then, and then, and then, and then went uh, avant-garde. And then when, and th- this is like his fusion, like straight, you know, fusion attack. Yeah. And it's awesome, obviously. It's, uh, it's pretty evident that it comes from an educated place. Um, I want to set the tone for the album. So 1971, the recording is pretty raw in terms of you feel like you're in the studio. It opens up with a um, analog synthesizer sound and uh, tribal drums. Yeah, he, now, 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 when I as soon as I heard that that synthesizer sound, I was yeah. like, "This is right up G's alley." In oh, terms it, of... it 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 inspires me to so much because it almost sounds like when you're overloading an amp without running any power to it. It's that it sort very of thing. over, very overloaded. It, it's, I, I made a note. I made a note while listening to the album that said, "This is the the blueprint for Jack White's pedal sound. This is what mm. Jack White would like for his bands to be: raw power uh, with a with a precise uh, synthesized sound." The opening track to the side A um, may be my favorite track from the side. Like just the opening statement uh, really carries me through, but. I do too. It's, I mean, it's it's a long track. It's eleven minutes. I mean, it's it's quite a journey. Clocking so. at eleven, the longest one on this side. Um, I think it presents what you what you said yesterday. Like that's the statement when a band puts a record out and there's a there's a tune that's a statement. I think this one is that statement. Um, yeah. But the tracks couldn't be more further from uh, from each other, right? Like opposite ends. Even though uh, it's a sonic palette, uh, all the tracks have a different thing. They do feel tied down to 1971, but they don't feel dated. They do not feel dated. Do you like the uh, the drumming on the first track? The drumming on the first track, the quality of the sound of that synthesizer, and the ideas. If if the folks listening to this, uh, which we both, you and I know that these are highly intelligent, very attractive people here, uh, this reminds me a lot of Alice Coltrane. If If you don't know mm. who that is, please. I'm not going to yeah. tell you, but you should go over there. And it sounds like that period of Alice Coltrane on her electronic keyboard, big ups to that, represent. But this is not that. This is, uh, this is coming from a different place. And, uh, and, and, I, and I enjoyed the whole attack the entire time. I'm glad we both agreed that number one is the track. This one we can get, you can get from anywhere from the cheapest one on Discogs is 75 euros. To 250 euros. Original pressings. Yes. Um, 
there is uh so so this time i went through my streaming services and i found this album this album is out on the streaming services uh the version that came out is 2008 and it has bonus tracks i did not listen to bonus tracks because that's not the jam here um no so nothing happened between when that record came out and you know whenever they put it right out uh, again which to me says a lot about um the uh authenticity and the originality of an album like this one you know yeah well they there there's they have more than one album but this record did not get reprinted or anything oh at yeah, all yeah the um that they they have another album too which is cool larry coriel actually plays on it oh that's uh, and and this one's after this one uh, yeah, this is the first one. Fantastic. The second one's called like Nursh, and it's it's got John Heisman, who's a badass drummer. Yeah. And um, but I like the first one more. I like this one. I like this one. The, the other one's really good too. Yeah. It's not much of a step down, but this one, like you said, like that opening track, that really, I dig it. Uh, and then like a left turn for sure with track two, like the vocals just yeah. talking. Yeah. So, uh, so to, to paint a picture, there is a, there is a rhythm track, there is music happening, but it's a spoken word sort of piece that carries you through in a story. Um, it it has the um, the the what's the word I'm looking for? It has that adventurous sort of feeling to it, mm-hmm. uh, a little bit whimsical but dangerous. Um, it, that's I think the main uh, line be connecting the first track and the second track. Um, but overall, folks, here in Smoke Movie Got Him, this is gold is getting dropped here. You guys uh, yes. need to uh, spend time with I the think so. F- I think so far, this is the um, highest musicianship we've listened to so I, far. I agree. I agree with you. On a lot of events, also, uh, the highest. I would say it's not, the, not necessarily the. Yeah, I don't, I don't say it's the, necessarily the most original thought yet. No. Although it is original. Yeah. But we've we've listened to some pretty uh, awe inspiring, um, you know, original yeah. ideas. Yeah. Um, so let us go to side two here, folks. I think it's about that time. It is about that time, and and if so I have strap to strap on you, your boots, if I have to remind you what yep. needs to happen. You're already a little late, but get to it. Let's roll one, flip that over, and let's go to the B side of this fantastic record on smoking. If you got him. All right, folks. See you soon. And we're back. Okay. All right. Well, I'm gonna side two. I'm gonna be really honest with you from the get go. Mm-hmm. I thought I don't like to start off in a negative note, but this side should have only been the Raga. Well, it almost is, right? Like, yeah, but but it's very important that if the statement is the Raga, and and folks, here's here's the thing. Uh, it's uh, it's their version of an Indian raga that's that somehow expands into Miles Davis Isle of White. It's dope. It's the super guitar playing dope. is dope. It's super dope. Everything about it is wonderful, but for some reason, they put some three minutes at the end after this track, which clearly this <laughs> yeah. is the main event. Which which is un- unnecessary, you know, Un- completely un- unnecessary. Un- it takes the it takes the complete the heat out of the room. Keeping it from being a perfect album. Yeah, yeah uh, I, I wasn't, I wasn't totally but, sold, but it's still a great damn journey considering what the A side yes. was, right? Can we talk about the guitar I playing, agree. please? Uh, if you could, please, you know, you, you are professional. You've been, you've been doing that instrument for so many years, decades and decades, decades, decades. Can you, can you expand on the guitar playing on this, on this side? Well, well, one, what's interesting about this, like. Larry Coriel obviously being a great, great guitar player. Like I told you, he's on the next album. Yeah. And the guy on this album, Siggy Schwab. Bless you. Don't know much. Don't know a bunch about him, folks. Yeah. But he really drops some great and original guitar playing at this time. He does does a good, definitely uh, the Indian influence. So it's really cool so far on our journey is you have to look at the influence of these bands and they've all been different. Yeah. But you have to think of like, well, why are these bands truly progressive rock bands? 
well, it's going to be they're, they're, they're borrowing something from another uh, cool thing that's been happening, right? So, like, we, hear, we heard International Harvester. We heard the drone. We talked about that, yeah. right? Um, obviously, like, yesterday we talked about, like, just the noise yeah. and, and the, the avant-garde, um, the tape looping and stuff we talked about. Yeah. And this one, to me, uh, there has to be, like, this influence that, that, that we're not we're not seeing right yeah. like it, it, it but it it didn't really show up until this track because like it being a rock it's like oh well yeah they're listening to indian music yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. correct i thought it was really and, interesting because he the first time he's almost playing traditional style guitar right but then at one point mm-hmm. he does the bend that's slightly off to hit the indian scale and then that yes. turns the piece around just that for me at least it was the moment that i was about to be not into the track he did that bent and and my ears perked up and all of a sudden it was a whole new batch of interest just on the track alone and the bass player is the great eberhard weber who's played on everything who's laying a hell of a foundation on this thing once it starts picking up speed fred braceful on drums who uh who put this album out um, I mean, what record label yeah. is it on? I think it's on Globe Records. Would be my Global Records. Okay. Global, Global Records. Records. Yeah. See, 1971. Um, I wouldn't be surprised at this point if this band, this producer, this studio, the collective of people creating this album, have heard Harvester, have heard Cro-Magnons. You know, we have. Oh we yeah, have, yeah. Oh yeah. By this time, yeah. yeah oh have, yeah. Tons oh yeah. Of uh, music. Definitely Harvester. Definitely Harvester, right? And uh, and if you guys haven't, if you folks haven't heard uh, National Harvester 1968, the review, that's the first uh, episode that we did here on Smoke If You Got Them. I would highly recommend going over to the YouTube uh, and looking that up. Uh, and Tone Float Organization, same. They would they would know they would know craft work. Wolfgang Downer would know those. That guys. would be episode number two. So so we're laying we're laying the groundwork down, so you're not lost when we go uh, through these uh, steps. But I assure you that this album. I can hear all those pieces coming together. So we basically got like two, two, two tracks for our all time mixtape, you know, track one side a and, and the, the rock here. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's tracks that you always should keep in your pocket. And, uh, and I feel like this is, this is an album that allows you to have your choice, you know, of a or B and um, you know, wonderful, wonderful record. Uh, I do want to cover, uh, the artwork because it also links up with mm. episode one, two, and three, right? Um, every time, folks, why do we have to say it every time to because you? Because it's a fact. You're make cool music. If you're gonna make cool music, you must have a cool album cover. Invest time in it. It makes sense. Yeah, and 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 the second half is if you make a cool album cover and have shitty music, fuck you, fuck you. We ain't got right. no time for that. Um, and and neither yeah. and neither should anybody else. So um. The uh, the album cover, uh, another throwback that made me think a lot about Alice Coltrane, uh, high end colors. Um, the formation of it is the same idea of design in 1971. Uh, you would get these like more attenuated, more earth tones. This is almost a heavy royal set of colors with like big bold lines. the The cover sounds exactly like what this album sounds like. Um, looks like I apologize. The, the the artwork looks like exactly what this record sounds like, um, and 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 I'm stoked that we got through this whole thing. Um, I still stand by the fact that the last track should not be there. There was no need for that padding, but all in all, uh, this album is is untouchable. It's well executed, and uh, and it was a pleasure to listen to it. You know, and. Uh... We talked about this as a little bonus, little ESP disc doop, doop, talk doop, today, doop, 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 doop. It's a little drop in the little knowledge for you guys, if you, if you don't know. And, and I'm sure you, you have to know. Like, you wouldn't be here. You'd be the hippest of the dip to be here, okay? Great! Now, uh, we're just going to talk about the first hundred albums that ESP dropped, okay? okay? And we're not going to go every single one, but... Let's just talk about uh, ESP 1000 series. Second album they ever did, Albert Eiler, Spiritual Unity. 
Ooh. It's worth a few dollars, folks. You can find that one. Okay. Farrell Sanders Quintet. Farrell's first. Ooh. Well, that's self explanatory. Yep. New York Art Quartet. Mm. There we go. Try to find one of those folks. They're not around. Ornette Coleman Town Hall, 1962. That's a, that's a great recording. I've, I've heard that on YouTube. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Now, I'm just going to go, not, again, we're not going to do every single one. I'm just going to show you some highlights that I, I like. Paul Blay Barrage. Ooh. Albert Eiler Bells. Yep. Uh, Sun Ra, the Heliocentric Worlds of Sun Ra, Volume 1. Stop them. You're hurting them. Milford Graves Percussion Ensemble. Oh, ruthless. Uh, volume 2 of Sun Ra, Heliocentric Worlds. How about The Fugs, The Fugs' first album? I have that original pressing in my possession. And, and I'm, I'm going to put myself ooh. over here real quick, uh, folks. You should. Um, I bought a mint pressing. Mint, never been played. I opened the plastic, yes, and I listened to mm. it, yes, and I blasted it, yes. And it's a wonderful album. I'm sure at some point we'll cover it. But see, this is the importance of putting out a good catalog. A catalog is what's amassed by a company that puts out records when your worth is the catalog that you own. And I think there's a big difference between somebody making 3 million copies of something or a select 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 of something that's going to last. And ESP Disc, um, you know, you just dropped bullet points that are strong enough yeah, to hold uh, uh, eras of music. We're only in the first 18 that's, albums that's of the insanity, first 100. Man. That's crazy. Keep going. Tell them. Uh, Albert Eiler, Re- Spirit Rejoice, Paul Blake Closer, Miriam Brown Quartet, our boy Frank Wright mm. Trio, Henry Grimes, The Call, Timothy Leary, Turn On, Tune In, Drop Out, The Fugs, The Fugs again. How about Noah Howard Quartet, Sonny Murray? Wow. Mm. The Gods, The Gods, Contact High with the Gods. We probably will talk about them. Uh, again, Marion Brown shows up, uh, Marzette Watts. Uh, Gnostic Al. It's a, it's a heavy it's Ooh. a heavy catalog. That's just the first again fifty. Uh, Gato Barbieri, mm. um, William S. Burroughs. By the way, I call me I, call me Burroughs. I got, a, I got a I got the Gato record, and I also got the Burroughs record. Uh, so much again, like like so many really cool guys, like Charles Tyler, Steve Lacey. Mm. Um. So many great guys at the time. And if, Alan I'm gonna, Sondheim, I'm gonna give you, Alan Silva. I'm going to give you a note here, folks, to, to you guys. Uh, you know, if you haven't heard these names, you should be writing them down. Go online and check what they have to offer. You know, we, we're going to try to give you as much as we know. Uh, but a lot of this really just goes on to, to you and checking these things out. And it's years and years of research and amassing the right stuff to, to be able to, to put out the right kind of people. We don't choose mediocrity here. We choose authenticity and originality and that's what this is about so go on now we're not we're, we're we're not we're not like the the, the music police not like, at all like we have we, we haven't said uh anything about what you should should not listen not to at all. uh in terms of um even what our show's gonna be we're, we're, we're basically focusing on um progressive rock avant-garde prog rock yeah areas of that in all, in the um, entire, which in might the which might world. lead us into Maybe some jazz fusion. Who knows? Um, yeah, but as, as of right now, so we're, we're sort of we're starting to try on that for now, folks. And um, until we run out of those albums, then we might go someplace else. But those ESP discs mostly was um, jazz avant garde yeah. artists at the time, and, you know? and and the great ones too. It's not like uh, it's not noise, you know. It's it's the really great ones that are like cornerstones of this thing. So so we have there there, there we have a little. Uh, quinky dink for our, for our, our audience oh. to talk oh. about, and uh, I found an original pressing of Cro Magnon Orgasm within driving distance, about 40 minutes from my house Uh-oh. for a hundred dollars US. And I live in Canada, so it's gonna be like 140 bucks, yeah, yeah. So, folks, do you think I should do it? Pull the trigger. Hey, that's a 
Right there. Uh, you'll see the poll come up right now. Mm. As, as he's saying this, look underneath. Just comment. Just comment. Comment, comment anywhere. Just say, say buy the record or not buy the record. Yeah, I think that's a great thing to do. And then we can uh, put it up. We can maybe even do a listening together party, whatever the hell. Guys and gals, folks all around, should Jeremiah, the Oracle of Oxford County, buy mm-hmm. the original pressing of the chrome? I say yes. My vote don't count because I'm in here, but I say yes. What do you guys think? Also, uh, it's funny you said girls because girls listening to a prog rock podcast, not very You'd likely. Be surprised. I hope there is. I hope Need there I is. Need I remind but, you um... uh, the janitor shirt? I just, it, you know, if you don't know what that is all about, folks, go to tomorrow, yesterday's podcast and you will hear that story because mm. it's all in there. Her favorite band was Cum- Cummus, which we will talk we about. We will definitely talk about that. But in the meantime, we've run yes. desperately out of time. So thank you thank for you listening folks. to Smoke Em If You Got Em. Have a good weekend. We'll catch up tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs>